Hi, I'm Jen Roberts. Thanks for joining me today. Today we're going to be discussing the MDS coordinator's role in morning meeting. I've received several questions as to what the role of the MDS coordinator should be during morning meeting, so we're going to jump right in and get started. The MDS coordinator needs to be prepared for the meeting. So you need to make sure that you're at your facility at least an hour before the meeting. You want to make sure you have all items prepared before you walk into the meeting. Those items that you should have include any MDS assessments that need to be completed, a list of MDS assessments that you need completed from other IDT members, any ARD changes that you may have had. So if you have changes in that MDS schedule, you want to make sure that your IDT knows what those changes are so they can get the resident interviews completed. You also want to review the charting compliance for the facility. Look at those ADL scores to ensure they are accurate. Now you're going to have to print those scores off or have them pulled up on a computer and ready to be discussed with your IDT. The IDT can help provide feedback as to who was on that assignment, who you might need to reach out to if the coding is not accurate. So one example of this would be if your resident is transferred using a Hoyer lift and they're not able to bear weight that resident would be total assistance. So if they were coded limited assistance or extensive, I would want to reach out to whomever documented that and provide one-on-one -on -one education and then follow up to ensure that that individual is able to amend their inaccurate coding. So it's very important that you review these ADLs daily or you won't know what needs changed, and it's too late once it gets to you when you're doing the MDS. So you want to make sure that you're providing education if you identify any issues in the charting. So being prepared, gathering that information, and making sure you're ready when you go into the IDT meeting. The morning meeting typically begins with a review of your new admissions, anyone who had a change in payer, discharged residents, and residents who might have moved rooms or might be changing from a regular Medicaid to a managed insurance because they're needing to be skilled. So you're going to be listening to all of these changes and really listening for items that might impact the MDS schedule. And then you'll make changes after you leave the meeting, but just listening for those items is very important so you can determine how you're going to complete the MDS schedule. The next item that typically occurs in a morning meeting in the clinical portion is discussing of the new admitted residents. So when we're discussing the newly admitted residents, we need to ensure that we're listening for the primary diagnosis. What is the reason that the resident is in your facility? What's requiring them to come to your facility and receive care? And if they're Medicare, you want to ensure that the skilled services meet the eligibility requirements for skilling a resident in a long-term care facility. So making sure we have a diagnosis that was actually treated during the most recent hospital stay is very important. During your AM meeting, you should also be looking for that discharge summary from the hospital. That way you can go through the discharge summary, get those ICD-10s that you need, look for any surgical procedures that might have been completed, and really just go through that information. Oftentimes the IDT will read the new admission orders, and this would be a good time for you to begin your care planning process. Starting to open those care plans and ensure the admitting nurse started that plan of care is very important. Make sure you are looking at the care plans that other nurses complete, just to ensure that those care plans are accurate. If they are not accurate, provide one-on-one -on -one education to whomever created the care plan. 
That way they can learn the process and learn how to complete an accurate care plan for your residents. During the medication review for these new residents, we would like to try and keep in mind our quality measures. So try and keep in mind if you hear of an antipsychotic or an antidepressant, even a pain medication, we want to really look into that and ensure we have the right diagnosis. Make sure that if a GDR might be needed in a few months that that resident is placed on a list to remind social service or the nurse to go back and ask the physician about that GDR, the gradual dose reduction. And also listening to make sure if the resident is started on an antidepressant and we have that new diagnosis of depression, we need to make sure that that's added to the resident's plan of care and the new ICD-10 is put onto the face sheet. So really listening to those orders. If there's been a change in resident condition, you're probably going to hear new orders for labs, x-rays, maybe new orders for nebulizer treatments, maybe a resident has started on oxygen. Those might be residents who require a significant change and you might have to look into the resident's chart a little more after morning meeting. So just make sure you're keeping a list of items that you want to follow up on. So when you go to morning meeting, you'll come prepared with all of your items and you'll be keeping notes of things that you need to follow back up on after the meeting is completed. We also want to review our ADLs. So looking at the ADLs is going to tell you a few things. You're going to be able to see the compliance. So is your staff completing the ADLs? The accuracy, are they completing these with accuracy? So are they coding extensive assist when they provide weight bearing assistance? Or are they providing limited assistance even though they're bearing someone's weight? So you can determine if you need to provide one-on-one -on -one education. If you're not reviewing the ADLs daily, you won't find out that there's a change or that someone needs to be educated and correct inaccurate documentation. You wouldn't find that out until you're actually doing the MDS. So you want to make sure you're reviewing that every day. Also, you're going to want to listen to see if any residents had a fall the day prior. By listening for the fall interventions, we can ensure that the care plan is updated. We can also make sure that the ADL documentation was correct. Typically, when a resident falls, it's very hard to get them off of the ground. This might mean that we use two people to assist the resident back up to their feet and to their wheelchair. That can be counted for your transfers in your ADL. So you wanna make sure that the staff capture an accurate picture of the resident to ensure that you have the most appropriate care plan. So making sure they document if that extensive assist with two people or total assist occur when a fall occurs. We're also going to be listening for any new skin issues. So if there are any new orders for a treatment for a pressure ulcer, you might hear a new low air loss mattress, anything like that, we wanna make sure is care planned. If we haven't scheduled a significant change yet, you'll want to follow back up with that and schedule that significant change. And it should be scheduled within 14 days of identification of that wound. So making sure we have all of that documentation that we need to go ahead and then schedule that significant change. During morning meeting, there will be a lot of different conversations occurring, a lot of interaction with your IDT, and it's the best place to provide education on items that you're needing assistance with. So for instance, if I review my ADLs and I notice that there is a very low compliance rate, that means the staff are not documenting the care that they're giving. We might need to reach out to the unit manager or the assistant director of nursing, or even the director of nursing if necessary, 
and talk to them about the compliance rate. Work with your team to ensure that you're able to capture a true clinical picture of your residents. I hope you found this video helpful. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and ring that bell so you can see more of our videos as we release them. And as always, I hope you have an amazing day. And thanks for learning with Jen. Thank you.